What does the Russian invasion of Ukraine have to do with climate change? Well, everything. Russia is the world's second largest exporter of natural gas and the third largest exporter of oil. The European Union receives around 40% of its gas from Russia. An extensive pipeline infrastructure connects Russia to many parts of Europe. So the current war can lead us down two paths. It could increase fossil fuel drilling in other parts of the world, or be a strong opportunity for a rapid clean energy transition. Spencer Snyder and I have teamed up in this video to give you fresh perspectives on the Russia-Ukraine crisis. He's a fantastic YouTuber creating informative journalism videos, so make sure to check out his channel. Oil and gas accounted for 60% of Russia's exports and 39% of the federal budget revenue in 2019. And Germany leads the European Union in the realm of Russian energy dependence. Germany is by far the biggest EU spender on Russian oil, gas, and coal, paying more than 40 billion euros in 2021. It gets 55% of its natural gas, 52% of its hard coal, and 34% of its oil from Russia. In January alone, Germany sent 2.6 billion euros for oil and gas imports to Russia. In fact, Europe is so dependent on Russian energy, many EU nations are hesitant to cut off Russia's fossil fuels despite supporting Ukraine. Here is what German Chancellor Olaf Scholz had to say after the US and UK asked Germany to stop Russian energy as part of the international sanctions. Europe has deliberately exempted energy supplies from Russia from sanctions, Scholz said in a statement, adding, at the moment, Europe's supply of energy for heat generation, mobility, power supply, and industry cannot be secured in any other way. It is therefore of essential importance for the provision of public services and the daily lives of our citizens. Ja, wir werden diese Abhängigkeit beenden so schnell wie das nur irgend geht. Das aber von einem Tag auf den anderen zu tun hieße, unser Land und ganz Europa in eine Rezession zu stürzen. Hunderttausende Arbeitsplätze werden in Gefahr, ganze Industriezweige stünden auf der Kippe. Zur Wahrheit gehört auch, schon die jetzt beschlossenen Sanktionen treffen viele Bürgerinnen und Bürger hart, und zwar bei Weitem nicht nur in der Zapfsäule. Sanktionen dürfen die europäischen Staaten nicht härter treffen als die europäische Führung, das ist unser, da die russische Führung, das ist unser. Putin is the European Union's energy sugar daddy, and despite the EU supporting Ukraine on Twitter and in prayers, few countries are listening to their pleas to reduce Russian energy consumption. Fossil fuels have funded Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Moreover, fossil fuels are a powerful weapon in geopolitics. Even if Russia's military and strategic objectives fail with Ukraine, the country has enough power to manipulate energy markets in Europe. Most world leaders agree that their nations need to cut off energy dependence on Russia in order to reduce the probability of conflict in the present and in the future. Regarding the solutions to achieve this energy independence, however, there are two major competing narratives. The first focuses on increasing domestic energy production in countries via more fracking for natural gas and increased oil drilling. At a first glance, this would enable energy security, at least in the short term. Many oil companies and think tanks in the US are taking advantage of the ongoing war by promoting and increasing domestic oil and gas production. Many politicians on both sides, Republicans and Democrats, want increased domestic fossil fuel production. The more gas Europe buys from the United States, the theory goes, the less influence Russia wields and the faster it sinks economically. With its economy in tatters, Russian leaders will be more likely to come to the negotiating table and cut a deal on Europe's and America's terms. Basically, America wants the rest of Europe to cut off Russian oil and gas so the US can provide the deficit by shipping fossil fuels overseas. Europe, if you oppose us, we won't give you our oil and gas. Hey, Europe, we got you. To hell with Russia. Buy the oil and gas from us. Give us your money. <laughs> Not Russia. Joe Manchin, chair of the Senate Energy Committee, has said that delaying new gas pipelines when Putin is actively and effectively using energy as an economic and political weapon against our allies is just beyond the pale. United States fossil fuel producers have seized on the Ukraine chaos to bump up production of liquefied natural gas. In January, American exports of LNG to Europe surpassed Russia's deliveries for the first time ever. Energy writer Daniel Yergin hailed the surge in American fossil fuel output as the beginning of an American energy comeback on the global stage. Moreover, the Biden administration is boasting on Twitter about increasing fossil fuel extraction. Jen Psaki went nuts, stating, US production of natural gas and oil is rising and approaching record levels. 
more natural gas than ever this year, more oil than ever next year, and even with a global pandemic, more oil production this past year than during the previous administration's first year. So despite the climate promises of Biden, we are drilling more oil than ever. This is to show that the administration is aware of public anguish over rising gasoline prices, an eternal political headache for presidents. A brief side note on rising gas prices, as it's a really important topic affecting our daily lives. Oil prices were rising even before the Russian invasion began, mainly due to a combination of inflation, increased oil demand after the pandemic, and OPEC policies. More on this in an upcoming video. The second major narrative is for countries to undergo a rapid transition to renewables, mainly solar and wind, to reduce dependence on gas irrespective of its origin. This is, of course, a sane strategy given the threat of climate change and the fact that we absolutely need to reduce emissions in the energy sector if we want a livable planet for humans. Renewable energy represents a growing share of the energy sector in Europe. However, there are still ways to go. The costs of renewable energy are drastically dropping. They're cheaper than ever before, and they're even cheaper than the cheapest coal available. Renewable energy is extremely scalable, and they're the safest and cleanest sources of energy. So why continue the usage of fossil fuels which pollute the planet and are limited? The International Energy Administration developed a 10-point strategy for the EU to reduce its reliance on Russian fossil fuels by over 30% in one year. And this is a big deal if it is implemented. So here's a quick rundown of the strategy. Do not sign any new gas supply contracts with Russia. The impact being it enables greater diversification of supply this year and beyond. Replace Russian energy supplies with gas from alternative sources. Impact increases non-Russian gas supply by around 30 billion cubic meters within one year. Introduce minimum gas storage obligations. Impact enhances resilience of the gas system by next winter. Accelerate the deployment of new wind and solar projects. Impact could reduce gas use by 6 billion cubic meters within a year. Maximize power generation from bioenergy and nuclear. Impact reduces gas use by 13 billion cubic meters in a year. Enact short-term tax measures on windfall profits to shelter vulnerable electricity consumers from high prices. Impact cuts energy bills even when gas prices remain high. Speed up the replacement of gas boilers with heat pumps. Impact reduces gas use by an additional 2 billion cubic meters within a year. Accelerate energy efficiency improvements in buildings and industry. Impact reduces gas use by close to 2 billion cubic meters within a year. Encourage a temporary thermostat reduction of 1 degree Celsius by consumers. Impact reduces gas use by some 10 billion cubic meters within a year. Set up efforts to diversify and decarbonize sources of power system flexibility. Impact loosens the strong links between gas supply and Europe's electricity security. Finally, there's a much ignored narrative voiced by a handful of scientists and leaders. It's to reduce energy consumption in the first place. There's a deep inequality in energy consumption, of course, within countries and internationally as well. Developed countries use an extraordinary amount of fossil fuels, so why not take steps to reduce our consumption with relatively easy measures, such as passive solar design for minimizing the use of electric lights during the day, increasing bikeability and walkability in cities to reduce car transport, incentives for commercial and residential solar installations. Push for these measures in your city, and I will also describe how to make your city truly sustainable in an upcoming video. Now, if you want to learn more about how Russia became a top global oil and gas producer, then go check out Spencer Snyder's video on this topic. Just click here and watch this really informative and interesting video, which is the better half of this one. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you soon.